Hey, what's up guys? Matt here coming to you from Lead Loss, Harley Davidson. So I gotta thank Richard for coming out. Good friend of mine, he's got a lot of cool bikes and he just so happened to have a 2000 model year CVO Road Glide. So the very first CVO Road Glide we've ever seen and Rich is going to talk to us a little bit about some of the facts about this bike and what made it such a cool iconic motorcycle that it inspired the new legendary orange CVO Road Glide today. And really when this bike was made, the 2000 model year, it wasn't even called a CVO. Richard's going to go into that a little bit more and talk to you guys all about the details and show you guys just how far Harley Davidson has come. Hello, my name is Richard and I've been coming to Lay Law since I was a little boy way back when they were at Rosemi. We've just been coming here and we like to ride and Harley is just a part of our life. And I brought today, I brought one of my personal bikes. This is a 2000 Screaming Eagle Road Glide. Okay, this bike is the first one that Harley Davidson introduced back in year 2000 it's the first road glide screaming eagle that they come out of the factory production line as you can see there are two color ski in the 2000 model road glide one is what we call the racing orange which has the harley davidson eagle with the racing orange and the other one is a tri-red which is three kind of red tone and uh, to make this bike special they're probably the one the first one the Harley start to put the number of production okay if you come over here you can see right on the center console it says 1550 okay because they made 775 of racing orange color and also 775 in tri-red that adds up to be 1550 total production number and if you ever go to the harley museum they do have one exactly like this one the racing orange in their archive area okay and also the 1550 is the displacement for this bike it's 95 cubic inch in the year 2000 that's a twin can first replaced the, the evil model 80 inch and the regular road glide come out as 88 cubic inch twin can and this was already a step up because it's considered a screaming eagle model so instead of the factory 88 it's using a bigger motor and that becomes the standard for Harley okay as the days goes on every screaming eagle and the CVO later on call is always come out with bigger motor okay in advance us the regular model will follow okay and I had this bike since 2007 I believe it's very very hard to find because based on the limited production number the first one i had actually was the tri-red okay then it took me some time to finally found the racing orange which is the one i have now and i turned back pretty much everything when i got it he did some upgrade okay switched the pipe and everything i spent some time did some research and was able to restore back to it was out of the factory back in 2000. Everything on this bike worked. I took it to Sturgis, to Milwaukee, to Yellowstone. They're just bulletproof. The only thing that I ever did this was six years ago when I rode it to the Harley homecoming, the 115th anniversary in Milwaukee. 
me and my buddy, we have to replace the fuel pump. And that was it. Everything else is just never let me down. When you're on the road, it's just gas and go, gas and go. In 2000, Screaming Eagle Road Glide, the first road glide that it comes with a factory low profile tool pack as a standard that's already mounted on the bike. As you can also see right here, it has the logo of Screaming Eagle Road Glide 1550. And let's see, I also have the original manual and the most important service manual, service manual. okay Love it. before, the internet, right before yeah. the internet this is the golden book okay <laughs> and I also have a small a replica of something that I can Beautiful. put on my desk as, as you can also see, the Screaming Eagle on both sides of the fairing. And according to Harley, this is hand painted by each artist. The Screaming Eagle is assembled. Each technician has to hand build the whole bike from frame, engine, everything. And the paint shop, they painted the eagle. So even a, so, every eagle is a little bit different on each bike, even on the both side. 2000, they have two model, two color, racing orange and tri red, and that's what they call FLTR SE One, which stands for the first generation. And the second year, 2001, they have FTR SE2, which has also two color. One is the dark gray, one is the blue, okay? After that, they discontinue. They went with mostly Roll King Touring until 2009. That's when Harley brought back the CVO Road Glide. At the same time, that one also has the Eagle logo right on the ferry, which there are, all night they made three colors, the racing orange, the yellow, and also the silver. That was, and 2009, that's when CVO, Custom Vehicle Operation, is printed on the bike and they stop using screaming evil. Everything on the bike works. And 2000, you have an option, okay, of getting a cassette or a CD player, okay? This one has the original cassette, which still works. 
gonna tell the car. <laughs> so the 2000 is twin can 95, okay? And it does have five speed and uh, five gallon. Everything you see here come out pretty much as the original Screaming Eagle, all the chrome and original exhaust. The only thing that I upgrade was the white wall and also the windshield. And uh, it does come with floating rotor, chrome front end, and it has, it never let me down. On any road trip, I'll take this bike anywhere, just gas and go. It's right now, it currently have, I think, 43,000 miles. Okay. And it never once left me stranded, nothing. It's just as solid as it gets. pretty cool to have these two motorcycles side by side and to just see exactly how much progression has happened in the last 24 model years. Obviously a lot has changed from the 2000 model year Screaming Eagle Road Glide to the new 2024 CDO Road Glide and it is very cool to see how the new 24 model year paint job the legendary orange definitely took inspiration from the original 2000 model year Road Glide. Even the tone of the paint is very similar. Of course on the new model year you've got that painted brush stroke in there and on the 2000 model year you've got that eagle on the fairing which on the CVO Roguelad STs you've got that eagle that is very similar in size and look of course back in the day in 2000 like Richard said that was all hand painted by the artist which I think is a very cool touch I think it's very interesting that we've never seen a chopped tour pack shipped from the factory on a motorcycle ever since the 2000 and 2001 CVO Road Glide obviously we've seen a lot of King tour packs shipped on various bikes like the limiteds over the years and a lot of the electric glide classics and ultra classics and things like that but although both bikes are very different and you definitely have a lot more technology on the new 24 model year bike better suspension way better brakes way better motor you know on the 2000 model year twin cam 95 cubic inch motor those bikes put out about 70 horsepower and about 80 foot pounds of torque the new 2024 puts out 115 horsepower and 139 foot pounds of torque so we're talking about a massive power increase plus on top of that you've got the variable valve timing on the 121 cubic inch engine i mean we're talking about 26 cubic inches larger now which is a huge jump from 2000. you know it's interesting too as i was doing research for this video i came across an article on the 2000 model year screaming eagle road glide and it was from a big publication back in the day and it was funny because it was almost like the editors were mocking this bike i think they were mocking it because it was just very over the top 
stock, big paint, you know, which a lot of the inspiration from this bike actually comes from Harley Davidson's race team, which I thought was very coincidental because now this year we have the CVO Roguelite ST, which is a direct consumer adaptation of the King of the Baggers bike. But anyways, the production was very limited, like Richard said, to about 1,550 units. And the editor of this article was basically saying that as he rolled up to the rock store, people were laughing. Uh, I don't know if it was because people just thought it was way over the top or that Harley Davidson has just kind of now created this bike that was so flashy and, and so expensive at an MSRP of $23,000. And from 2000, Harley Davidson has only doubled and tripled and quadrupled down on the CVOs and their popularity and the desirability of these bikes only continues to rise. And so Harley Davidson is without a doubt the pioneer of the ultra premium touring machines. And what's interesting too, if you look at them side by side from afar, you still have a very similar silhouette. You still have the general look of the iconic shark nose fairing. Yes, this fairing is from the 2000 model year that's still during the dark ages of Indian when they were bankrupt. And there was one fairing in between these with the Rushmore fairing that came out in 2015. I think another thing that really shows just how dated this 2000 model year bike is, is that cassette player. And one of the things that Richard says when he's showing the bike off, he'll show it to some of the young guys and they haven't even seen a cassette tape before. But to now contrast that against the new infotainment system that comes on these motorcycles, it's just a different world that 24 years ago, I think a lot of people could never even imagine that you're basically just have this big sheet of glass that's a touch screen but yeah definitely a big contrast in price as well with this legendary orange paint you're paying a six thousand dollar premium over the 44.5 so you're about fifty thousand five hundred dollars for this bike that's msrp of course you can get the copperhead paint without that six thousand dollar upcharge for 44.5 if you guys haven't already seen my top 10 CVOs of all time video, I'm gonna link it in the top right hand corner. I'll just end by saying, I think on this 25th anniversary year of the CVOs, I think probably the most popular model as a whole throughout their 25 years of history of CVO has gotta be the Road Glide. I actually would argue that the Screaming Eagle Road Glide here in the 2000 model year is probably the first real Screaming Eagle bike. Now, of course, the FXR2 and 3 in 1999 are technically the first CVOs, but I personally feel like they kind of just grandfathered those in and they weren't really specifically built to be a Screaming Eagle bike. So my personal feelings are is we have the first specifically built bike to be a Screaming Eagle model, aka a CVO. And we've also got now the latest and newest CVO Rogue Glide in existence here. Let me know what you guys thought of this video. If you liked it, give me a thumbs up. And if you want to get more Harley Davidson updates and news, make sure you hit that subscribe button to follow all my videos and see all my future uploads. And if you're looking for a motorcycle in Southern California, make sure you hit us up here and pay us a visit at Laidlaw's Harley Davidson, where we have absolutely no added dealer markup. That includes CVOs. Thanks a lot for watching, guys, and we'll see you on the next one. Later.